So I want to welcome you to our show today. This is the end of the world as we know it. Now what? And I'm very grateful to have you here. This show is really based on there's so many new things happening. The world is not our parents' world or our grandparents' world. And it certainly won't be our children's world. It's a new world. It's the end of the one that we knew. And there's something else arising and emerging in every moment. And all of the topics that I'm bringing out in this program are specifically showcasing that as a reality and a truth. Well, today I am totally thrilled and excited to have with us Katie Hendricks. Katie Hendricks is an absolutely phenomenal person. She's one of my favorite people on the planet, actually. Every time I'm around her, I feel just alive and crackling and juicy. And it's, she's like one of these women that I want to emulate in my life. I want to be able to bring as much joy and aliveness to the world around me that she does. And so I'm absolutely thrilled to have one of my heroes here with me today. So I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit about Katie and then we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So Katie is the CEO and the director of training for the, Hendr the Hendrix Institute, which is an organization, it's an international learning organization that was started by her and her husband. And it's really about the core skills of conscious living. Their passion is about how do we be present in every moment? How do we consciously, meaning fully embodied, which we're gonna talk about more, how do we fully embody presence in our life? allowing us to fully experience and express ourselves. So what they do is they actually explore catalysts of power, of communication, the power of creative arts in psychotherapy and in organizational systems. And Katie herself has been featured in many magazines, journals, and books. She received her doctorate degree in psychology in 1982 and has since been board certified um, by the American Dance Therapy Association. That started in 1975. She has consulted and taught graduate programs in universities all around the world and has an international reputation as a seminar leader for, the health, and for health and business professionals. Excuse me. She's co-authored 10 books with her husband, Gay Hendricks, including Conscious Loving, which is one of my personal favorites, The Conscious Heart, and Lasting Love. And so now, without further ado, I want to bring on one of my heroes, Katie Hendricks. Hey, Katie. Now I don't hear myself echoing, so that's much better. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever you did. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I changed from earbuds to this old-fashioned one, so it worked better. Uh-huh. Okay. There you okay, go. Okay, so... Uh... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, in working with people, I have found that, especially people that are working on being much more present, it can actually be incredibly terrifying to, for them to try to imagine dropping out of their mind and living in their body and listening to their body as if there's a part of them that's afraid that they're gonna leave their logic behind or that there's something that they're gonna be missing or that they, you know, can you, have you had that experience with people? Oh yeah, who are yeah. Who really kind of living in their mind? Well, Talk a one little of the things I think we, what they can we do. forget, it, is there's been at least 2,000 years of saying that the body is dangerous, that feelings are dangerous, that your, um, your experience can be best controlled if you stay up in your head, but that feelings, you know, particularly your you know, fear or anger or sexual feelings, those are dangerous and you've got to control them. And it was also considered to be um, not spiritual. So for 2000 years, we've been told to ignore the body, control the body, uh, don't pay attention to the body. And so the great result of that for many people is that they actually haven't made friends with their body experience. They haven't made friends with their feelings and the incredible benefit of being aware of what body teach us. So I think part of what um, the, certainly both of us are doing along with many other people is reawakening the value of having a body wisdom centered life rather than a head centered life. If we take a look at what being head centered has created for us over the last uh, 2000 years, the result of that is that 
people don't really aren't able to connect you can only do a certain amount of connecting through your brain in fact the cognitive part of your brain is about the size of a quarter it's located right, right here and yeah. if you're only using that you're using such a small part of what's available to you to really interact with the world and interact with your inner wisdom and part of what your experience of tuning into your body sensations and that rich mix of what's going on inside your skin is that it's your inheritance it's what you've learned from millions of years of the people who've come before you and have learned and ingrained that into their their sensory systems that you can draw on. So for example, how you would know someone approaching you is someone that you want to get to know or someone you want to avoid. That doesn't come through your logical thinking. That's someone that you immediately feel a resonance with and you want to get to know them more. That comes from your body wisdom. There's a huge amount of value that our body wisdom gives us that we don't get if we're just living in our logical brain. But it's uh, th there's so much and over so many thousands of years that there's a real process that needs to happen now for most people that, uh, to be able to take advantage of that. I love that. I love that. Well, you know, what else I think is absolutely amazing is the opportunity that we have, have that when we're living in our minds, life is so less rich. It's, there's yes. so much that we're missing that, you know, I think that's part of the reason why we turn to things that stimulate us. For instance, you know, there's, there's our, you know, our, our, our lusts and expanding our minds with, you know, alternative substances and all of that kind of thing where part of that is just us trying to get that full experience by not living in in our full embodied ex expression and I, I have a feeling that that could be part of kind of the the crisis that a lot of people find themselves in of just really not wanting to be alive because it's kind of boring and it's and it's monotonous yeah. up there in that mind area yeah it sure is and uh, I think also Zen that it's um, what I see both for individuals and also in their relationships is that people generate criticism and blame both self-criticism, self-control, and blame with others as a way to get some juice. And the juice that most people are addicted to is adrenaline. And that adrenaline hit when you get in an argument or you criticize somebody or blame somebody gives you that sense of something's going on in your body. And if you don't have that rich relationship with noticing your breath and noticing what your movement is opening up for you and noticing the the feeling flow in your body if you don't have that you're going to go for adrenaline because adrenaline is very reliable and when people get an adrenaline hit they get that ah, ha, 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 you know that momentary yeah. glee and uh, and it's incredibly addictive so people escalate that to get more of the hit because the adrenaline wears off so quickly. So I actually think that's the biggest, one of the biggest issues of our time is that people are massively addicted to adrenaline. And the only thing you can do when you're addicted to adrenaline is to escalate your experience so that you can get a bigger hit of adrenaline. And an antidote to that is to really learn to listen to yourself to listen to the rich flow, kind of the ocean of treasures that are going on in you all the time, and to begin to prefer that. I love, love that. And one of the things uh, I'd love to do a quick little conversation around, and specifically, is there's a lot of people that, that may be out there thinking, adrenaline, I don't have time for adrenaline. I'm not out there skydiving or racing cars or scuba diving. But there's a lot of ways that we crave and get addicted to adrenaline, such as yep. fighting, anger, you know, there's, um, can we talk a little bit more about some of the ways that we get addicted to adrenaline that are just in our common life oh, yeah. that, so people can start recognizing this? I, yeah, I would love in your, that. In 